Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Happy Easter. I'm Brett. If we haven't met you, um, if we, if I haven't met you, who are we anyway? I'm Brett, pastor here at the church. Glad to see you. Uh, you really do look great, even though I can't see you. Just an act, just a word of faith there. Uh, you look great. Fantastic. Anyway, we're here to celebrate uh, a great day, uh, Christ risen from the dead. And it really is hope. It's hope. I don't know what you bring in with you regarding, you know, what you're going through in your own personal life here this morning, but um, just knowing enough about myself and people in general, uh, I know in our church here, there's a, there's a people that are really needing hope. Maybe for even some of you, it's like, this is my only hope today, that I, want, I need to hear something. <laughs> I need to hear something. Some of you are going through personal struggles in your life, uh, things that are weighing you down, you you feel maybe guilty for them. You feel hopeless about them. Uh, situations that have happened to you, family issues, conflicts perhaps, just things that can leave you with despair and wondering, is it, is it going to get better? Is there really hope in any of it? And I get to be the, the, the bringer of good news to you today. And the good news is that there's a God in heaven who loves you. There's a God in heaven who cares about you cares about your life. See, when um, Jesus came, Scripture says that it was God in the person of Jesus coming, that Jesus is part of the triune God, the eternal Son of God who came to earth. And the reason He came was beyond teaching us things and helping us understand more about who God is. He came for the express purpose of dying on a cross for us. All of us uh, stand before God in need before him of forgiveness, forgiveness. Each of us stands in need before God of having our, our hearts cleansed, our lives uh, brought before him to be experienced forgiveness. And God himself came in the person of Jesus Christ to die on the cross, to pay for my sin, to pay for your sin. That's the whole point of the cross. It's an atoning sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that was made instead of you having to make it. And so when you come to Jesus Christ for forgiveness, he gives you forgiveness because he paid for it. He satisfied it on the cross. Now, the good news of the resurrection of Jesus is that when he rose from the dead, it is a testament that his sacrifice for your sins and mine was accepted by God. He raised him from the dead. He's alive. Everything that Jesus promised about eternal life, promised to give eternal life to the person who trusted in him, everything he said about it is true. He rose from the dead. His promise of forgiveness through the cross, forgiveness of sins, people being made in a right relationship with God, all those promises were validated by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He's alive. Scripture says if Christ didn't rise from the dead, then we have no hope at all. And it's true. If he didn't rise from the dead, then we're still in our sins. There's no hope of eternal life. There's no hope of a great reunion in heaven with those who have died ahead of us. But in fact, Christ has risen from the dead. And everything you hope for, long for, want, desire in your heart is true because of him. Now, if you brought a hopeless situation in your in here today. A hopeless situation. I don't know what it might be for you. The wonderful thing about the resurrection is not only that Jesus, you know, accomplished what he came to do, our redemption, but it means that he's present here among us. He's here. He's here. Promises to come into the life of the person that invites him into a relationship with him. And so there are no hopeless situations, no hopeless people no hopeless anything when Christ is present, present. Not just in an idea, not a philosophy, not sort of a, an encouraging statement, but a literal reality, the resurrected Christ from the dead who's among us personally. And my prayer for you today is that you would sense his presence, you would know it. And if you're that person that's here going, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life, and I don't know how things are going to change, and I'm not sure what's going to come about in the, my future, if you're one of those and you're like, oh, God, I want your help, I want your guidance, I want your strength, and I've got great news. Christ is here to come into your life, to give you a whole new life. So let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this great morning. 
I thank you for every person that's here. And you know their life intimately. You know everything, every detail, every thought, every worry, every fear, every discouragement, every frustration, every bondage. And Lord, you know it all. And you want us to know the freedom of your grace, your mercy, your love, your forgiveness. And so, God, we invite you. We invite you. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Speak to us through the scriptures, through what you've done. Speak to us, Lord, so we would hear your voice and respond to you, your invitation of love to us. We ask this all in the risen Christ's name. Amen. Well, I want to, um, I want to just give you two encouraging verses of scripture here today and uh, that I hope will sort of picture, help you picture what is this when we talk about the risen Christ and what does it mean for me and, you know, what is Christianity And here are the two verses. I want to read them for you and then sort of unpack them. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All of this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Just those two verses. And let me sort of take them. Oh, step by step through here. First thing is that if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Christianity is this, essentially. It's a vital relationship, a vital union with Jesus Christ. That's Christianity, number one. It's a relationship with the resurrected Christ. Scripture says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, in Christ. What does that mean, in Christ? Christ in you. You in Him. It means literally that a person has this relationship with this resurrected Lord. I remember in high school when I um, first heard the good news that I'm giving you today, the good news. I first heard it, and um, I didn't grow up in a a Christian home. I like to let everybody know. I mean, it's not that our church, our family was anti-church or anything like that. It's just we grew up, I grew up in the Bay Area, and in the Bay Area, you just don't know you're supposed to go. You know, <laughs> when I was uh, when I went to seminary in Dallas, down in the Bible Belt, uh, everybody knows you're supposed to go, so they all go. But in the Bay Area here, you know, and uh, I remember hearing the good news for the first time when I was in high school, and I was I was hurting inside, you know. I mean, I I, I wanted my life to be different. I didn't like the the pattern where I was headed, I didn't like what my life was about, but I had no hope. I I didn't know where to turn. I really didn't. And right on the high school campus, uh, this church showed up at lunch, and there was a band, and this guy gets up, and he starts telling uh, us students who were just having our lunch (laughs) what I'm telling you, that Jesus rose from the dead, and that uh, a relationship with him can change everything. And then they passed out flyers, invited us to come down to the church to hear more, you know. And I took one of the flyers, and it was like God just was calling me to himself. And as God knew my heart, knew I wanted my life to, to be different than it was, and I had no hope. And so when that flyer came, I took one, and I couldn't, I wasn't driving at the time, didn't have my license yet, and so uh, my dad gave me a ride to church, and he dropped me off. And I went inside and, and heard a presentation like this one. And, and at the end, uh, I was invited to invite Jesus Christ, who was alive, into my life. Into my life. To experience His forgiveness, to experience His grace, and to know Him. I mean, and so I, I still remember it, praying, Lord Jesus, I open the door of my life. That's how I said it. I open the door of my life, and I receive you as my Savior And Lord, forgive me my sins and make me the person you'd have me to be. God, I invite you to change things in my life. And I said that prayer along with 50 other students who had come forward, you know, in that meeting. And then I went out front and my dad came back and picked me up and I got in the car. And my dad said, well, how did it go tonight? How was it? And I said, well, Dad, I... I asked Jesus Christ to come into my life. And he said, that's nice. (laughs) That's nice. 
As I say, we weren't a church-going family. He's like, huh. To invite Jesus Christ in your life, that's what it means to be in Christ. That's what it is to have Christ in you. That's Christianity. Christianity is this change that takes place. You know, those who have Christ are a new creation. That's what it is. Another picture of it is, you know, we have a vineyard out here and um, a bunch of Chardonnay grapes and Pinot Noir grapes that we, we raise them. We're the only church, I think, in the world that has its own vineyard, but hey, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Uh, so we, we, uh, we, we got like 30 acres out there of grapes, you know. Pray for our vineyard. Um, but uh, if you go out in the vineyard, what you notice is you notice there's a vine and you notice there's branches. And the vine's key, okay? I'm learning this in viticulture. It's all about the rootstock, you know? I mean, the branches, they just hang on and it happens, you know? They bear fruit, but the vine is everything. And Jesus, on one occasion with his disciples, his followers were, were going through a vineyard and he stopped them and he, he gave them a, a real visual lesson. He stopped them in the vineyard and he said to his followers, Jesus said, now I'm the vine and you're the branches. So you need to keep that straight. Okay, I'm the vine, you're the branches. I mean, it's from the vine that the life flows, the sap, the vine, the root. I mean, it's, it's where everything comes. And the branch, the branch just needs to stay connected. We, got, but we have bud break out there, so things are starting to happen now. Come September, right, the end of September, somewhere in there, we're going to have a great harvest, great harvest. Now, all the branch needs to do all summer, just listen to me. <laughs> branch is stay connected to the vine. Because if you're disconnected, you know, it's not a lot of hope for you. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you stay connected to me, if you're in me, and I'm in you, you'll bear much fruit. You'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, Jesus said, you can do nothing. You're not going to bear fruit apart from me. You'll be like a severed branch that just dries up out there, and we collect them all, you know, grind them up. (laughs) Uh, So you, the picture is this, that when you become a Christian, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that's the picture. If you're in Christ, it means that you, you you are vitally connected to the resurrected Lord in relationship, and His life, here it is, His resurrected life, makes you alive, transforms you. His resurrected life in you brings forth fruit from you. Love, joy, peace, patience, His power, His grace, His mercy. I mean, it just, it just flows. The branches out in the vineyard, they don't have to try hard to bear fruit. You know, like we've been working hard all summer to get this fruit to come. And we're frustrated because it's not happening like we want it to happen. And You know, if you could hear the branches talking. <laughs> it's hot out here. You know, all they do is they just abide in the vine. They just stay connected. This is the life. This is the life. When Jesus says, I've come to give you life and give it to you abundantly, this is the life he's talking about. It's a life in which his resurrected life in you empowers you, guides you, directs you. It flows from you, from you. Now, branches can't bear fruit out there if they're taped to the vine. You know, like with duct tape or monster tape. You know, you can't just tape them, all right, and have fruit come. It's not going to work. You can't take the branch and place it near the vine, you know, like a couple of feet away, but just near it. Nothing's going to happen. It has to be in vital union. It has to be in the vine. The vine is in him. See, if you want the life of Christ, there's just this choice in which you say to him, Lord, here's my life. I invite you in. I receive you as my Savior, my Lord. If anyone is in Christ, that's the picture, he is a new creation, Scripture says. This is Christianity. You become somebody that you weren't before, a new creation. 
When I became a Christian and asked Christ to come into my life and began that vital union, I, I remember I went home. Dad took me home, and I, and, uh, I didn't know you were supposed to go back to church, so I didn't. So I'm being totally honest with you. I didn't know. Nobody told me you're supposed to come back, so I didn't. Accepted Christ into my life, but I didn't go back. A month later, a month later, somebody from the church called me up and was following up on me, quote unquote, and uh, said, Hey, do you want to go to church? And I said, Sure, sure. So they picked me up, took me to church, and, and then took me to the youth group on Tuesday night. And I don't think I've missed church probably more than a dozen times since then. It's years ago. Just didn't know you're supposed to go to the church and be encouraged, you know, and meet others who can encourage, who encourage one another and learn from the Scriptures. I just didn't know that. But I began to grow, and I began to change. And, and quickly I noticed I really was a different person because it's like my eyes were opened. My eyes were opened. I remember going to school, and, and the things that I was doing before, I just... That's not who I am anymore. I mean, that's sort of the thought. It's like, nah, that's, that's not who I am anymore. And some of the things that were dragging me down that were the, the worst things in my life, I'm like, that's just, that's not who I want to be. My eyes were open. I noticed my heart had been changed by God. I started wanting different things, longing for different things. I hungered to know Him more. I, I just hungered to be with His people. I was... Um, I was a different person and have been growing in that relationship ever since. When I went to school, I'll, I'll never forget it. I um, At church, we shake hands, you know, everybody shakes hands, we high five like we just did, greeting, all that, warm hearted. And so uh, when, I, when, I, when I'd go to school, I would want to shake my fellow students' hands at school, just random people. <laughs> How you doing? And I'd say, welcome to school. <laughs> I literally did. It was like, you know, and I was, I was just, there was a joy in my life, a joy in my life. There was a freedom. God's forgiveness is a wonderful freedom. Knowing that Christ died in your place, knowing that it's finished, that he satisfied the debt that exists between you and God forever is a wonderful freedom. It's like, and I was joyous, and so I would shake everybody's hand and welcome to school and all that. And I had some friends literally Sit me down. I'll never forget it was at lunchtime. They said to me, sit down. So I sat down. They said, what's happened to you? <laughs> what's happened to you? And um, so to be able to share that, well, I invited Jesus Christ into my life. I came to know him. He's real, you know. I didn't get religion. I didn't get, like, some kind of duty. I, I received a person, a real person, who's alive, who's alive. You know, the Scripture says that, that before you come to Christ, before you invite Christ into your life, before you're in Christ, you know Him, before that, that we're estranged from God we're without God in the world. Sin has caused a separation between us and God. It describes it as blindness. You know, you, you can't see. Dead in sins, it says. Dead in sins and trespasses. That, that without God in the world, unable to hear, you know, really, hear from Him, just separated from God. Dead spiritually, it says. Dead spiritually. But when you hear the mercy of God and you hear of the love of God, you hear the good news that I'm giving to you today. You hear this and God speaks to you and breaks through the silence and you hear his voice and you feel the call in your own heart of God to come to him for grace, forgiveness, mercy, a new life. That God opens your eyes and he literally raises you from the dead. He takes what is dead and makes it alive. That's what it means to be a new creation. It means to be made alive, alive, just like Christ rose from the dead. The Scripture says you rise with Him you, to a whole new life, a new creation, something that you weren't before. And so what an invitation, what hope in a world in which 
it's so hard in this world to find hope. You know, we, we watch news programs, we watch what's happening in our world, and it's like, well, the politicians aren't going to solve it, that's for sure. You know? They're trying, but they're... What we, need, we need in this world to know that there is hope, and there is. God sent His Son. God sent His Son. Jesus Christ to die on a cross, shed His blood so that you could be forgiven and you could have a whole new life in Him. Old things passed away, it says. Behold, the new has come. What a wonderful thing. You know, the old, for me, was a life in which, the old that's passed was a life in which, you know, I was just kind of doing it myself. I mean, I had a lot of anxiety in high school. I had a lot of fears in high school. I was just plagued by a lot of guilt in high school. I had a lot of discouragement in high school. And I had nowhere to turn. I mean, I really didn't. I was, I was involved with drugs, wrong people, just on and on. Life was getting worse, worse. That was the sort of what's past now. What's new now is that I know this resurrected Christ and we're walking through life together. We're facing every challenge in life and difficulty in life together. He promises this in Scripture, that when you know Him, He'll never leave you, nor will He ever forsake you. What a wonderful promise. He's in you. You're in Him. He's not leaving. He provides guidance, direction, wisdom from His Spirit. That's all the new. The old was, I was sort of on my own. As I felt, I just, no wonder I was without hope. <laughs> no wonder I was frustrated discouraged, weighed down. Now, everything's been made new. I'm new. Christ has made something new of me. And I have my eyes opened. And I understand what God is doing in the world, what God is doing in my life, what God is doing in the people I love, and that He's present with me, and empowering me and strengthening me. What I, well, this is what I want to say to you, and I want you to understand this, that Christianity is not this. It's not... You know, you become a Christian and your life changes and everything's wonderful. I think that's a lie. You know, I mean, you know, it, it, Christianity, health and wealth and whatever you want, you get, you, this is to be a Christian. And some actually, you know, are purveyors of that false teaching. What's really true is this. This is what's true. Is uh, you, you come to Jesus and you have, still have problems, <laughs> you know. I mean, I look at our church here. I mean, we have over 50 families that lost their homes in the fire, you know, and they're going through all this insurance stuff and the discouragement of that. And it seems so long ago. It was only six months ago. We have people in our church who are going through cancer treatments, fourth stage cancer. We have people that have lost loved ones to cancer. And Christian people that know the Lord, love the Lord, dying cancer. We have people looking for jobs. You know, have lost their jobs. We have people that, are, that are, have conflicts. And what am I saying to you? I'm saying the difference is this. Being a Christian doesn't mean your circumstances change, but it means this. You become a new person in the midst of those circumstances. That's it. So the old is, the old passing away, that's approaching life without Christ. That's approaching life with my own strength, my own power and wisdom. No wonder I felt so defeated. Everything becoming new is... Having circumstances that aren't easy, but knowing Christ will never leave me or forsake me. I mean, holding the hands of people who are, who are slipping away from this earth and knowing that Jesus promises eternal life and being able to share that with them and having the, the full confidence of that eternal life. I mean, it's people who are sick going through problems, but knowing God's grace is sufficient for them in the midst of the problem. And that he'll empower them and give them wisdom to know what choices to make when things are crazy. So it's not that circumstances change. It's that the person's different. And that changes everything. It changes the way you see things. It changes the way you go through the experience of it. Yeah, I mean, all things are becoming new. That's the literal original language here. Behold, and notice, behold, look what God is doing. All things, the new has come or the new is continuing to come. One of the things you learn about uh, when you 
grow in your relationship to God, one of the things you learn about is that God takes every experience in our life, every experience, and He uses it. Every experience, He redeems it. Sometimes it's to be able to show compassion to other people who are going through something that you're going through. He just, he just allows you to be able to encourage them with the same encouragement you receive from God. Other times is he, he uses it together for good to teach you about Him, His power, His faithfulness, His ability to see you through, His wisdom. I mean, every experience of your life when you know Christ and He's in you and you're walking with Him, every experience of your life, God is redeeming in a way to love and bless you. Now, that's all things new. <laughs> I didn't see it that way before. And I may be even talking to somebody here today, bitter about life, bitter, fearful, wanting to check out. Listen, God weaves all these crazy things, <laughs> weaves them all together for good to those who know Him and love Him. We have many stories in our church, many stories. Mine, I have my story. Many have other, we have many other stories. And one of the stories we have is from Michelle, who is one of our baristas, one of our baristas. And she came to know Christ a year ago, and it changed everything for her. Watch her story on video now. When I was 20, I found myself in my first abusive relationship that would not be my last. He was extremely charismatic and interesting, and I thought if an interesting person could be interested in me, that that meant I had value. So nobody expects to find themselves in an abusive relationship, but once you're trapped in it, it's really hard to break out of that fear and that anxiety and depression that eventually leads to just complete and utter hopelessness. In those situations, you're basically lying to save your life. You no longer know what your value is, and you absolutely believe the lies that you're told, that you are not worth loving, that everybody that ever encounters you will treat you like this. It becomes something that you identify with, you start believing all the lies of telling you that this is happening because I deserve it. In the darkest moments of my abuse, the only thing that was there with me was God. Easter of 2017 was the first time I came to Spring Hills Church with my family. I remember coming in and being completely overwhelmed at all the cars that I saw in the parking lot and then all the people that I saw in the church and feeling so out of place, but then quickly being greeted by such warm, welcoming smiles and listening to Pastor Brett talking about that Jesus is alive and that that meant that we could have hope. I wanted to understand that hope so bad. That's what kept me coming back. Shortly after Easter, I gave my life to Jesus and my life has never been the same. Having gone through so much depression and so much fear and anxiety, even if those things pop up in my life again today, even if the lies try and seep in, I have been made new because my identity now lives within Jesus and who he says I am. He's come inside my heart, he lives inside of me, he's changed every aspect of the way that I view myself, the way that I view other people, how I love, how I receive love, and because of that, I will never be the same again. All right, Michelle's back there making coffee, uh, so. <laughs> I tell Michelle, we have the same story, just little different circumstances, but it's the same hopelessness. And um, she ended up coming to church and hearing what you're hearing today. And listen, some of you, some of you are, you have Michelle's story, some of you have my story, some of you have your own story. And deep in your heart, you, you just have wondered, is there an answer, is there something, something that could help me? Is there a way out of this? And you've been asking that in your heart. And you know God knows that you've been asking that. He knows. And He's brought you here. Some of you are here and you're like, I don't even know how I ended up here today. 
I don't know how I ended up. I'm here. Listen, God brought you here to hear this message. He loves you. Christ died for you. And then he rose again from the dead. And you can have a relationship with him and become a new creation in him. And have know him and have your life be totally changed because of it. On the inside. The inside. I'd like to ask you to pull out the survey that we asked you to do earlier. If you could pull that out. On the back, there is an A, B, C, D. Did you see that? Everybody pull that out for just a second. The response card. <clears throat> I, want, I want you to check one of these. We, we did this last night, and, and by the way, it's so wonderful to get these cards from you. It helps us as a staff. We did this last night, the service, and just had hundreds and hundreds of these cards. I'm going to ask you to check uh, box A, B, C, or D. Now, don't just check one, you know. I'll explain what they are. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll get the sermon a B, you know, okay. No, that's not what that is, all right? <laughs> C plus. Um, and then um, after I explain it, we'll have a, an offering, and then you could place it in the bucket. Here's A. If you check A, I'm already in a real relationship with Jesus. You say, you know what? I'm so excited to be here. And, and uh, that's what I would check. I'm in that relationship. Michelle, check that. You know, you know Christ, and you have a real relationship with him, and you understand what it is. Check A if that's you. B, I'm beginning a real relationship with Jesus today. If you check B, you're the person who you all of a sudden realize God's brought you here. He's brought you here and you've heard the good news and you want to begin a relationship with Jesus today. Today. It's all new. I'm going to begin with him. See, I want to consider it a bit more first. Some of you are like this. This describes everybody. I mean, all of these. It, you might be C where you're like, give me some more time. I'm not saying I, I don't believe. I'm just saying I need to investigate it more. And to which we'd say, that's great. Come back next week. The next series we do on freedom is, is, going, to, is going to help you understand a lot of of a lot of the gospel, if you will, uh, the good news, it's going to answer a lot of your questions. So come on back. Then D, I don't ever intend on making that decision. That's just being honest. You're just saying, we had, a, we had a couple of D's last night, just came in. Just, you know what? To which I'd say, that's good, you're being honest, and we're praying for you. Because <laughs> some people that start with a D, I don't have any intention to make a decision. God works in their life, and they go all the way to a B, where they say, Jesus, save me. Come into my life. So I want you to just take a, about 30 seconds here uh, to mark that, and you can place it in the offering bucket when it comes by. But you work, and then when you, when you lift up and look at me, then I'll know you're done, all right? And I want to pray for you. So take a moment with it. All right, let me pray for you. God, thank you for the resurrection. Thank you you've not left us in darkness, but you, the light of the world, have come into this world to shine the light of the good news. And Lord, I believe and I know that you are shining the light of your love into some hearts here today. And if you're here today and you just... You'd say to yourself right now, you say to God, you're the person you were, I'm the person you were talking about. God's brought me here. I realize it now. If that's you, you're a bee 
Just say in your heart to God, make it personal, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Oh, come into my life. You're the vine, I'm the branch. I want to be in union with you. I want to bear the fruit of your presence, spirit in my life. Forgive me of my sins. I admit them, God, and make me that person you'd have me to be. Make me a new creation, something that you do and only you can do. And Lord, we rejoice today. We rejoice at your coming, your resurrection, and your presence here among us. Thank you for the hope that is in you. In Jesus' name, amen.